This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So you might be surprised to hear that there is a lawsuit over stimulus check discrimination. Apparently, when the law was created, there are certain groups of people who are not going to receive a stimulus check, and some of them are very upset about that. In the United States, we do have things like equal protection, and we do have various civil rights laws. Laws, and some of those civil rights laws prevent discrimination on the basis of a protected class, like race or gender. And in this case, a John Doe, as a class action lawsuit in the Northern District of Illinois, has filed a lawsuit on behalf of themselves and all others similarly situated against Donald Trump, Mitch McConnell, and Steve Mnuchin. And it goes like this. Now comes plaintiff individually and on behalf of the proposed class, etc. This is a class action based on defendants' unconstitutional deprivation of the rights, privileges, benefits, or protections provided to United States citizens via the enactment and subsequent enforcement of the CARES Act, both enactment and enforcement of which evidence the discriminatory purpose and intent of said act. So the parties are pretty simple. It's, it's John Doe, the plaintiff, and defendants Trump, McConnell, and Mnuchin in their official capacities only, so no personal liability is being alleged. This civil rights action challenges the CARES Act on constitutional grounds. The CARES Act denies tax-paying U.S. citizens their rights, privileges, benefits, and or protections embodied in the CARES Act section on recovery rebates for individuals. The CARES Act was introduced in the United States Senate on March 19th by Mr. McConnell, etc. It was signed into law March 27th by the president. It provides emergency assistance and healthcare response for individuals, families, and businesses affected by the virus. The CARES Act authorizes the Internal Revenue Service to disperse $1,200 to Americans earning up to $75,000 in adjusted gross income who have a social security number and an additional $500 for each child under the age of 17. To be eligible to receive a payment, an individual must be a citizen, permanent resident, or qualifying resident alien, cannot be claimed as a dependent on someone else's return, must have a social security number that is valid for employment, exception, if either spouse is a member of the armed forces at any time during the taxable year, then only one spouse needs to have a valid social security number, and, so that's in the uh, conjunctive, and, must have an adjusted gross income below an amount based on his or her filing status and the number of his or her qualifying children. So I think for an individual single person without dependents, it was $99,000. If you earn above $99,000, you don't get any stimulus check. If you earn between 75 and 99 as a single individual with, uh, with no dependents, then you get like a proportion. Any family that files a joint return where one of the spouses has a social security number and one has an individual taxpayer identification number, which the Internal Revenue Service issues to workers who lack social security numbers, cannot receive a stimulus check unless one spouse is a member of the U.S. Armed Forces. And they cite to a link here. I'll post uh, the link in the description below. There are 1.2 million Americans married to immigrants who do not hold social security numbers. And before we go too much further, this is gonna be my situation with Kaylee. When Kaylee and I get married, she'll have to register for an individual taxpayer identification number. And then when I file my taxes, uh, married filing separately, because I think that's how I'm gonna have to do it because of student loans, um, then, she will have to have an individual taxpayer identification number, an ITIN, and even though she won't have to pay taxes to the US, she will have to be registered and listed as my spouse on my taxes. And so if there was a stimulus check CARES Act situation happening and that was my status, I'd be one of the people affected by this. There are 1.2 million Americans married to immigrants who do not hold social security numbers. Of the 1.2 million Americans, those who file joint tax returns and are not in the military are 
ineligible for a stimulus check and deprived of the benefits and or privileges conferred upon all other U.S. citizens who otherwise qualify. Quote, it's a deliberately cruel carve out, said Manar Wahid, senior legislative and advocacy counsel with the ACLU. Putative class plaintiff is a U.S. citizen who earns less than 75 grand in adjusted gross income, whose children are also U.S. citizens, and who is excluded from the government's $2 trillion financial relief package because he files his taxes jointly with his spouse, an immigrant who does not have a social security number. Now, in case anybody's wondering, is this a denial of a stimulus check to illegal immigrants this doesn't have anything to do with illegal immigrants. This has to do with legal immigrants, people who followed the correct process, people who have properly registered, and plaintiff is married to an immigrant who pays taxes and files tax returns with an individual taxpayer identification number. The couple files joint tax returns. Neither are in the military. So this is not an, a situation where they're asking for a stimulus check for people who don't pay taxes. These are people just like you or me. They're just not U.S. citizens. They are legally here. They are legally paying taxes and they are married to a U.S. citizen. And when you're married to a U.S. citizen, you should have all the rights and privileges that that affords you and not be discriminated against by the government, is what they're saying here, and I, I happen to agree with. Had plaintiff not been married to an immigrant, plaintiff and his children would have otherwise qualified for a stimulus check. So now we get into the class action allegations. This is where they set up the class part of the class action. There isn't much interesting in here other than maybe the class definition. So if you are all United States citizens married to immigrants that file joint tax returns, remember there's married filing separately and married filing jointly. So joint tax returns where the immigrant spouses file tax returns using an ITIN or individual taxpayer identification number whom would have otherwise qualified for the stimulus check. Um, so then the class is numerous. There are more than 1.2 million Americans. They can be identified. Here are the common questions of law and fact whether they have been deprived of equal protection and due process of law, whether they have been deprived of a property interest because money is property, whether they have been deprived of rights, privileges, and, and immunities secured by the Constitution, whether they're entitled to actual damages, restitution, injunctive relief, or declaratory judgment. Plaintiff will fairly and adequately represent the class members. That also means that plaintiff's counsel has to be competent enough as well as financially flush or wealthy is not the right word for it. Plaintiff's representative is a law firm that has the financial resources to maintain a class action. When the judge says, okay, go ahead and identify these 1.2 million people and send out a you know, email to all of them or send out a snail mail to all of them, like a postcard or something, by the way, you're part of this class, uh, somebody has to pay for that. So who pays for that? Usually it's the plaintiff's class representative, the, uh, the I'm sorry, the plaintiff's lawyer, basically. The class representative's lawyer is usually the one that has to pay for that. And then the that's why the plaintiff's lawyer gets a big cut, right? Like whenever we see these things, everybody gets only a small fraction of what they were actually due because the lawyer took a big cut and everybody complains about, well, oh, look at those class action lawsuits. I only got three. I've still got... Back there, you, you can't, you can barely see it, but right here is my PlayStation class action lawsuit check from the PlayStation Other OS lawsuit. It was only like three dollars, so instead of cashing it, I hung it up. So count one is a 42 USC 1983 constitutional civil rights violation. The defendants in their official capacity violated plaintiff's procedural and substantive due process rights and deprived plaintiff of rights, privileges, and immunities secured by the Constitution. The defendants have engaged in behavior that violates constitutional property interests, and they have acted under the color of law to violate rights secured by the 1st, 5th, and 14th Amendments to the U.S. Constitution. Basi basically, what are they saying? That a person's marital status is not a reason to discriminate against them, and that is something that is being done. Now, on one hand, that sounds reasonable. Like, you shouldn't be able to say that people who are married to immigrants can't have jobs, or people who are married to immigrants aren't allowed to have a bank account, something like that. That sounds 
completely discriminatory. But remember, we also have a tax code that completely discriminates based on marital status. If you are married, you get a different set of tax rules than people who are single. If you are married filing jointly, you get a different set of tax rules than if you are married filing separately. So th there's definitely some level of legal discrimination. I'm curious to see where the line is going to be in a case like this. Defendants have failed to treat plaintiff as an equal to his fellow United States citizens solely based on whom he chose to marry. Plaintiff has lawfully filed his taxes in the United States, yet is being denied the rights and privileges under the CARES Act. Similarly situated U.S. citizens who are not married to immigrants and who filed joint tax returns have not been denied such rights and privileges under the CARES Act. Plaintiff brings this action against defendants in their official capacities. The Fifth Amendment says that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, and the 14th Amendment says that uh, no state shall deprive a person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws, and that is enforceable through 42 U.S.C. 1983. Then they go into marriage being a fundamental right. The Supreme Court has reiterated in numerous contexts that the right to marry is a fundamental right under the Due Process Clause. Discrimination based on the fundamental right to marry is presumptively unconstitutional and subject to strict scrutiny. Defendants discriminate against plaintiff on the basis of the fundamental right of marriage. So what does strict scrutiny mean? When they say that, uh, that discrimination based on the fundamental right to marry is presumably unconstitutional, and subject to strict scrutiny. It means the government can regulate things that are based on fundamental rights or protected classes, but it has to do so in a way that is necessary to accomplish a compelling government interest. That's the actual phrasing of it. So necessary means more than just the government wants to do something, it means it must be necessary. So there must be some compelling government reason why immigrant families who have a tax paying legal immigrant spouse and file jointly there must be some compelling government reason why that restriction is necessary so follow it out with me we don't want to pay families who have an immigrant spouse who pays taxes and files joint tax returns in the US because why what is the what is the public policy? What is the governmental policy that this necessary action to affect a compelling government interest? What is compelling about it? Uh, what, what, what could we just make up on the spot? Um, is there an income situation where like we expect families with immigrants with legal immigrant spouses who pay taxes and file jointly? We expect them to have a stimulus check from their country. Okay, but that doesn't that doesn't really address why the at least the social security number holding tax paying citizen doesn't get one. So maybe you can discriminate against the immigrant themselves by saying they don't get a stimulus check because they're an immigrant who I don't I don't know. It, it, it we we're, we're not assuming that this immigrant has a job in another country. They live here and are paying taxes, or at least filing a tax return saying what they, they could put a monetary limit on it and say that the immigrant can't make over a certain amount of money or something. But if they're filing taxes and those taxes don't disqualify the family from receiving a stimulus check, why doesn't the US citizen at least get the stimulus check? What is the necessary interest, the, the, necessary, the, the necessary action that is backed by a compelling government interest. I, I don't see one, but I have an open mind. I can change my mind in the face of contradictory evidence, unlike many people. Uh, so I consider myself very special for that. So put your 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 necessary interest, compelling your necessary action by uh, to to affect a compelling government interest in the comments below, and let me know if you can come up with one. I, I haven't been able to just generate one off the top of my head. So defendants discriminate against plaintiff on the basis of their fundamental right of marriage. The CARES Act provision at issue on its face and as applied, which are two types of constitutional challenges, on its face is one and as applied. On its face means, is it uh, facially, or is, is it patently, is it visibly 
discriminatory? Does the, do the words literally say we are discriminating against you know these people based on on their fa on their family status or on their gender or on their age or something like that? Um, that's a direct on its face constitutional discrimination or violation. As applied means it's not necessarily facially violative of the constitution. Instead, it's how the law has been applied by the executive branch that enforces the law. And that doesn't just mean the president. That means there are other executive branches, like the executive branch of a state government or something like that, executive branch of a city government. Defendants have no compelling interest. So not just that they, that they have a limited interest or something, they have no compelling interest justifying their policies. That goes back to that strict scrutiny analysis. They have no compelling interest on, of their policies justifying the discrimination based on marriage, and they cannot show that these classifications are necessary to serve any legitimate government interest. Defendants treat plaintiff differently than U.S. citizens who file jointly with other U.S. citizens who are similarly situated. The CARES Act singles out law-abiding, tax-paying U.S. citizens by excluding them from a benefit they and their children would otherwise be entitled to with no compelling interest justifying the law and without serving any legitimate government interest. And the law is not narrowly tailored to advance a compelling government interest. That's that's the strict scrutiny standard. Nor is it rationally related. Rational basis is the the lenientist scrutiny, the basic scrutiny level. Uh, just basic constitutional scrutiny is is there any rational government interest at all? Any rational government interest at all? And you can regulate certain things like Schedule One narcotics. Accordingly, the CARES Act provision at issue violates the due process and Fifth Amendment clauses of the United States Constitution. Alienage as a suspect class, classifications based on alienage, like those based on nationality or race, are inherently suspect and subject to close judicial scrutiny. Aliens are, as a class, a prime example of a discrete and insular minority for whom such heightened judicial solicitude is appropriate. Discrimination based on the alienage of a U.S. citizen's spouse is presumptively unconstitutional and subject to strict scrutiny. There you go again. And presumptively unconstitutional. Defendants discriminate against plaintiff on the basis of the alienage of their spouse. The CARES Act provision at issue on its face and as applied or threatened to be applied violates the due process and Fifth Amendment clauses. Uh, defendants have no compelling interest, etc. Count three is for a temporary restraining order. Now, again, it says restraining order and a lot of people immediately think of like a domestic violence restraining order. This is not that. This is a temporary restraining order under the federal rules of civil procedure, which is just a kind of injunction. It's just an order not to do something or to do something, and it expires after 14 days and has to be adjudicated fairly quickly. So they have asked for a temporary restraining order, issue a injunction against the defendants prohibiting enforcement of the law as applied in this action, and issue a declaratory judgment that the provision in the CARES Act violates the statutory rights and constitutional rights of plaintiff and denies them privileges and immunities. Plaintiff will suffer irreparable harm, which means harm that cannot be remedied. Ironically, harm that cannot be remedied by money damages. I, I think this is exactly that. This is exactly the kind of case where they could order the government to give you the money that they didn't give you and that they don't need an injunction to order the government to give you the money they were supposed to give you. But sure, go for it. You, the answer is no if you don't ask. And who knows, maybe the, maybe the court agrees in your case. The harm to plaintiff is severe. The public interest is, these are all the factors of a injunction. Irreparable harm, um, harm to plaintiff is severe enough. The public interest is served. You know, basically that that the you know these these if you if you go through the elements of what you need for a preliminary injunction or temporary restraining order these are all of them here injunctive relief is appropriate because defendants have intentionally excluded eligible US citizens from receiving a stimulus check which is facially discriminatory and retributive plaintiff has suffered and I think I think 
re retribution is saying that the uh, the administration is doing it on purpose because they don't like immigrants. Plaintiff has suffered and will continue to suffer immediate and irreparable harm, which is not limited to the loss of a $1,200 and a loss of reputation in the community and dignity. Plaintiff does not have an adequate remedy at law to protect and reestablish rights which have continued to be violated by defendant's actions. I again, I hear it, but I'm on the side that maybe you don't need injunctive relief in a case over money. I don't I don't know that it's going to be public information that you didn't get a stimulus check. You definitely don't get the money like if they don't send you a check. So I get that like you want you want the the court to order them to send you a check, but the court can order them to send you a check through a judgment as opposed to through injunctive relief. But yeah, you know, I get it. That's you you throw the spaghetti at the wall, you see what sticks. Uh, so more injunctive relief questions. So here's, here's here's a fun one. Intentional infliction of emotional distress. So I wasn't expecting to see this in here. Intentional infliction of emotional distress. You'll hear it described here, but it's usually very hard to prove. So let's see what they have to say. Defendants have intentionally or recklessly carved out plaintiff from the definition of persons eligible to receive a stimulus check during a global situation where unemployment is at its highest rates. Defendants have intentionally or recklessly punished certain United States citizens and their children from receiving the stimulus check for the sole reason of who they chose to marry. Defendants are aware that plaintiff and those similarly situated are financially struggling due to the situation facing the entire nation, yet intentionally or recklessly have forbidden that plaintiff receive aid. As a direct and proximate result of the extreme and outrageous intentional or reckless behavior as referenced throughout this complaint, the plaintiff has suffered substantial mental pain and suffering and severe emotional distress and injury. So they ask for an order certifying this action as a class action, an injunction, declaratory relief, and a, and a judgment striking the violated, violative provisions of the CARES Act for an award of damages to be determined, attorney's fees and costs, which is something that it's in 42 USC 1983. And they're asking for documents to be preserved, which is another good one. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six attorneys on this one. So, and three law firms. So uh, that seems like a solid lawsuit to me. Maybe the injunctive relief isn't necessary, but I think what it is is trying to get that relief quickly because, heck, I mean, it is a situation and to be denied your, your stimulus check until after the court gets a chance to get back into session, to hear the case, to issue a judgment. It's going to be 18 months. So these people need relief now. I get it. Um, I, I still disagree that it's intentional infliction of emotional distress or that it's an injunction level situation, but I would definitely feel slighted and, and discriminated against if I was carved out of the stimulus check package because I was marrying Kaylee, for example. I could more understand if I was carved out of the stimulus check package if I married Kaylee, moved to Luxembourg, and didn't pay US taxes. Like if I wasn't paying US taxes, then I would expect to not get benefits of US taxes. But when I, if and when I do move to Luxembourg, um, I will still be paying US taxes to the US. There's actually a tax treaty. So I don't think I'll actually end up in that situation. But what do you think of that? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Why? Do you think that the government has a compelling interest to create this law as a, is it necessary to create this law this way to affect a compelling government interest? If you can think of one, let us know in the comments. And I don't just mean like something super tentative or super far out there. I mean, can anyone think of a genuine interest that the government really would have a leg to stand on to discriminate against immigrants this way? Again, not illegal immigrants. These are tax paying immigrants who, who properly registered file their taxes and things with the US government. So let's uh, make sure that we have that distinction. So let us know what you think in the comments below. Be nice. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. That is our show. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education channel. We are a community supported channel on YouTube and Twitch and Floatplane, and we get financial support from you, our watchers and listeners, uh, on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.com slash law. Thank you very much for your monthly 
monthly support in the month of April at the $50 plus level. Thank you to Wes Delge, Video Quarantined, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Spirit Bear, Michael Pierce, Yonda Gray, Daniel Perez, Aspernari, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen, Ada, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Nicely Done Defense, Wesley Mullen for Mullen PC, Sean McNamara, Josh Baker, Ugly Grill, Gregory, Shiloh T, Michael Moore, and Beastman. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel next to me here. Uh, all of the supporters are on that panel and go in the description of the videos that drop. We recognize you monthly starting on the second of the month because of the way Patreon and sponsors process on the first of the month. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I love you all. Have a great week. I'll see you in the videos that drop. Bye.